Hello, this is Kun Timmers from Belgium, from TAC, and I'm so happy to welcome you to this great webinar with David from Lego Group. I will keep it, leave it to him to introduce himself. Um, this will be an amazing hour, I'm sure of it. Um, David is joining us from Lego Build the Change. Um, maybe we need to show you a little picture from him. And David, feel free to introduce yourself. Thanks, Con. Awesome. Well, there is the picture of me. Look at that. You can see it. I'm pointing the wrong direction. It's that way. <laughs> Amazing. That is me. That is, I think this picture, Cohen, really captures what I'm about. Um, it's, it's, yes, I have a job in the Lego group, but I'm also incredibly, like you guys, incredibly passionate about the planet and every living thing on it. Um, and outside of work, I do a lot of conservation. And that photo that Cohn just showed is me doing some bird research a couple of weeks ago in Gibraltar, which is just at the tip of Spain. There you go, there's the, the image again. I'm trying to work out, there we go. Ah, I nearly had it. Uh, he keeps hiding the picture. <laughs> that is a bird called a wryneck. And we, we catch the birds, we put a ring on them, we measure them, we weigh them, we measure their wings, we work out their age, and then we send them on their way back to their migration. So those birds, uh, that bird in the image was traveling to Africa. So I just wanted to start with that image because I'm super passionate about this. I, I really want to connect as many of us as possible using the Lego brand and the, and the Lego the platform globally with sustainability and working with cool people like, let me see if I can get this. No, that way, like this guy. <laughs> working with people like Cohen is, is an absolute joy because we get to connect with all of you out there. So Cohen, um, Thanks for inviting me back and thanks for like partnering on this. I'm really excited. That's really excited. We've we have brought... so many yeah, people ahead. joining. Uh, we can we? see the comments. And so the first thing I would like to ask all of our attendees, all of the people, beautiful people at home or at school or whatever you are, please drop your country, name of your country in, uh, in the chat, in the comments, and that we will be showing a few of those. Amazing. And it's always amazing to see that we have people from so many different countries. Sri Lanka, Turkey, also Italy, Bangladesh, wow, India, keep them coming, Peru and Chile, India again, love it, Pakistan, awesome, <laughs> wow. Moldova, whoa, whoa, whoa! This is so. I'm, I'm always blown away. Who have we got from there? Sri Lanka again. Oh my gosh, Guinea, Turkey, man, these are all the places I want to visit. South Korea, hi, South Korea, how you doing? Egypt, Cohen, this is Croatia. I love Croatia. I've been there. I love all these countries. This is awesome. Ah, oh, Ukraine, we love you, Ukraine. Hope you're well. Hope you're doing okay. Absolute pleasure to have you on here and hope you're all well this is amazing folks Cohen, isn't that cool it is it is mind-blowing i would say yeah because yeah. one more thing i would like to add is um, we want to keep this interactive so if you have any questions for david please drop them and i will show them and he is happy to answer those as well um sure. I just want to add one more thing, and that is I would like to thank you all for being part of the Climate Action Project. Um, make sure to uh, attend our big event, Climate Action Day, on November 3rd as well. David will be on there as well. He will be brilliant as ever. Um, but we will be having a lot of speakers this year, and we will be sharing the schedule soon. Um, David, the floor is yours. Oh dear, that means trouble. Thanks, Cohen. We'll, we'll connect later. Amazing. Well, hello, everyone. Good to see you. You might wonder what I'm holding here. This is a drumstick because if you've ever seen me before, you might know that I like, I like wildlife and climate and everything in the environment, but I also love music. And I do have a drum kit behind me. So every time I say a bad joke, I will do this. 
<laughs> which which might be quite often because uh, my children tell me um, I'm I, I say a lot of bad jokes. So anyway, that aside, uh, good to see you all. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. As we said, hello around the world. I wish I could travel around all those countries and high five all of you because you rock and you are involved in something that's very important to all of us and to the planet. And you are real change makers. It's because of you, you young people and teachers and educators out there that really care about these uh, agendas that change can happen. It's all thanks to you. So well done. Um, we're going to do a few things today. So first of all, I'm going to take you through a quick introduction to Build the Change. Some of you might know what Build the Change is. Some of you might not. And it's perfectly OK because we're still building the program and getting it out there. So don't worry if you haven't heard of it before. You will know it very well within the hour. So uh, after the introduction to Build the Change, we will take you through what we would like you to do for the Climate Action Project. Now, we don't expect you to do this during this hour because it is a very, I think it needs a bit more time and it needs you guys being very creative in your own time. But what I will do is take you through that workshop in quite a quick pace to show you what to expect and to let you know what to do at the end. Because ultimately, what we need from you is ideas. We and Build the Change, we love ideas and Lego is, you know, global and we are talking to a lot of big people who make big decisions. And every time we do that, I want to get children's ideas on the table. So every time you share an idea with us, we put it into a big collection that we then share with politicians, decision makers, and all those types. All right, so there is an ask. We do want you to do the project, the workshop, and we do want you to share at the end of it what you create. And all of that will be explained to you soon. All right, sound good? I haven't said a bad joke, but I'm gonna bang, bang the drums anyway. Uh, I do have a range of instruments in here if there are any requests um, on guitar. Good. So we will now start the presentation, Cohen. So Cohen and I are going to be talking to each other um, on and off camera. Uh, we are going to be running some, some videos as well, which I hope you enjoy. Some of the videos are super exclusive. We haven't shown them to many people yet around the world. So you are getting a little bit of a treat today. I'm very excited about that. But to start with, we will be looking at Build the Change. So. What is Build the Change? I hear you ask. I even have Build the Change written behind me. I can't get my directions right today. I have Build the Change written behind me in Lego. That was a, a gift from a partner last week, so I brought it back from the US. Thanks, Cohen, for expanding the, the, the image there. Good. I'm keeping Cohen very busy. Now, looking at the slide here, Build the Change is the Lego Group's flagship learning through play and sustainability program. All right? So, we have created this to combine two things that we love. One is sustainability, but the second one is something we have been doing for 80 years, maybe 90 years now. Uh, it's actually 90 years. We have been doing it for 19 years, and that's learning through play. So when we play, we all know that we develop skills that are super important for being a lifelong learner, for being resilient, and for coming up with solutions to problems things that we need a lot these days. So learning through play and sustainability, bring them together, you got to build the change, all right? So build the change is actually um, a social impact program and it's funded by the Lego Foundation. I do not work for the Lego Foundation, but I work very closely with them. I'm in the Lego company, you know, where we make all the sets and stuff like that. And then the Lego Foundation is the charity arm or the nonprofit arm that do a lot of the, the really big impact work around the world on play. But we also do it in the Lego group. So we work with them and we make programs like this. So we want to make a positive impact. Now, there, there are a lot of things that the Lego group, and I won't discuss them today necessarily, but there are a lot of things that obviously the Lego group are working on 
<laughs> in being more sustainable, especially around our products. And it's very exciting, some of the things that we're working on, especially around plastics. So please do go online and have a look at our commitments there. We'll send some links out later, but it's very exciting. And, and you know, being an environmentalist, it makes me very happy. Good. So Build the Change invites children around the world to take on real world social and environmental sustainability challenges and to use their creativity to propose their own solutions. Sound familiar? Sound good? I hope it does, because that's what we want you guys to do. Young people have the best ideas. I strongly believe in that. I'm using my drumstick like I'm a, a very strict teacher. All right. Um, and this learning through play experience is happening in schools, at events or at homes around the world. So we're doing something today together, but we also have built the change um, in homes on digital platforms. We're looking at books. We're looking at other stuff. And it's a very exciting time for our small team of three people. <laughs> so we are very busy and we love it. But Build the Change is very simple, all right? It's three simple steps. We will give you a real-world topic. So it'll be on circular economy this year. So we have loads of cool content on circular economy. Don't worry if you don't know what that is. We will give you loads of content on that, get you really inspired, get you really energized to make change, and then we'll give you a challenge to create your solutions around, all right? So we immerse, we create. The create bit is, you know, a really important bit because, you know, you guys are super creative and you're full of imagination that grown-ups, let's be honest, don't have as much of these days. We're trying to change that. But you guys are full of ideas and this is a very important step. Equally important is the third step where you share. Now, we all have great ideas. Children have more than adults, as I said. Now, we don't always get a chance to share them. And what happens to those ideas? Well, they sit in our head and sometimes make us feel good. But imagine if you could share those ideas and inspire real change, which is what we're all here for, right? Well, we're trying to do that and build the change. We're trying to get your ideas heard. Um, we want to give you a megaphone to shout your ideas, all right? So... Teachers out there, educators, classes, individual children, we want you to get involved and share your ideas, which you're so good at. So, so good at. Now, we do have a video now <coughs> just to show you what Build the Change is. So, Cohen, if you could play the, um, the video on introducing Build the Change, that'd be great. Let's have a look. Name an animal that's a really facing extinction. Red pandas. Yeah, red pandas, good one. Hedgehogs. Orcas. Orcas, yes. Planet Earth has all these cycles. Do you understand what a cycle is? A natural cycle. Flowers down. We've made a reservoir because of elephants, they don't get enough water. He built a habitat for red pandas and there's a little boat that if any time they want, they can have a little sail. children to be heard because often it's the adults speaking and not children plus we're the future and by the time the adults are dead we'll be running the country they were saying like don't listen to adults they were like listen to children they got all the good ideas yeah yeah it's just that shoo shoo <laughs> we're in charge now i like it like, I like they it. have to listen to us you guys rock, you guys rock. Take care. <laughs>
Very good. And I brought my Lego, look at that, mini figurehead. It looks like I've got a mini figurehead now. Just walk around. There we go. Hello. Anyway, brought my mini figure. By the way, I am an mini. I am an mini. Uh, I am a mini figure. Look at this. This is the David Palash mini figure, and uh, it was made a few years ago. And I still carry it around and look at it and smile all the time. Uh, it doesn't really look like me. It, do, it does a bit. It does a bit. Hey, from Italy. Good to see you, Monica. Good to hear from you. Um, I get little messages that come up. Uh, great to have you here. Uh, we also love your ideas. Hello. Hi from India. Hello, Pranam. Good to see you and everyone there. Um, good evening, Josephine. Good evening, madam. Thank you for calling me, sir. Um, I appreciate that very much. Hello from Pakistan. Wow. Good to see you, folks. Amazing. Love it. Good. You're happy to be here with you. Oh, thank you, Colgium. That's awesome. Right. Now, back to the presentation. Uh, we have... Three things here. This is why we do build the change. We have one thing is to get more learning through play out there because play is the best way to learn in my view. I still play, I still learn, and I'm sure you all do out there too. Sustainability. Children don't have enough sustainability education in their lives. And not you guys, I know you are very involved, but generally around the world, there's a big gap. There's a big gap and we need to fill that gap and make sure all children understand why sustainability is important. High five if you agree. Good. I felt that. Another high five. Yeah, I felt that too. Now, making children's voices heard. I talked about that. We need to amplify your creative ideas. And we're working hard on that. I'll show you a clip in a minute on how we did it um, last year. And we're going to do more of that soon. So let's have a look at the next slide. Woo! lot of stuff on this slide. These are some of the topics that Build the Change talks about. We've got sustainable buildings and cities and spaces. Maybe you've done projects like that in the past. I'm sure you have. We've got biodiversity and climate change. That was a really fun, I think we, we did that last year or bits of it. Um, we've got the new course on circular economy that we did with the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. If you don't know them, please check them out. They are very good friends of ours. And they are really spearheading, really driving uh, a shift to circularity uh, in businesses around the world. And don't worry if that doesn't make sense. You will understand it at the end of the course. Um, then, sneak peek, we are working on a new one on human impact with the Natural History Museum in London. I'm so excited about that because it's my favorite place in London. They've got everything from dinosaurs to Charles Darwin's collection to birds to microbes. Everything's in there. Um, so we're really excited. That will be coming out in November or December time. And then we've got another one we're doing, which you might say, oh, that's not environmental. Well, we believe, and I'm sure you do too, that we can't have environmental success without societal success. Okay. So we need to fix a lot of societal things to make environmental things happen. And we need to fix a lot of environmental things <laughs> to help society. So it works together. So we are doing um, more society-based stuff later. I have deliberately left one of these out. I'm going to get my pointer. I love pointing this. It's almost like, uh, you know, virtual. Thanks, Cohen. That, that's a lot bigger. I like it. Right. Pointy, pointy, pointy. The one in the middle, I'm pointing at the screen, that is Building Instructions for a Better World. Now, if you joined last year, uh, I was actually talking from the Climate Change Conference, and we just finished filming uh, some cool workshops. So, Cohen, if we could play the Climate Change Conference clip, um, you'll see more about what we did. My favourite thing about the planet is the greenery. The human beings and the creatures and just the space around us. Where we create a bond with other people. I really love nature and sometimes it makes me feel sad how people are cutting down trees.
Children have amazing imaginations. They can create things that we can't, they can see things that we can't. We need to involve their ideas more in decision making. Across the world, we've talked to 6,000 children. We asked them to give us three instructions that they would give world leaders to better protect the planet from climate change. We've collected those ideas and we've created building instructions for a better world. It's about giving students the opportunity for their voices to be heard and then for us to kind of give them a platform to share those ideas. A fabulous idea to be illustrating what children are really concerned about. We need to learn from them, we need to hear what their concerns are and then address them. We are urging world leaders and policymakers to give young people this critical opportunity to meaningfully participate in decisions that will deeply affect them. And we look forward to working with our partner, the Lego Group, to ensure that young people's voices are listened to and acted upon. Amazing to dive into their imagination. Got lots of ideas um, and they're just absolutely loving it. It's really exciting to see where this manual is going, these building instructions. We plan to take these as far and wide as we can into the hands of decision makers, start integrating children's ideas into those big decisions that are impacting their future. Good stuff. I hope you enjoyed that clip. It was magic uh, being part of that project and there's, you know, a whole bunch of people with me that, that were involved in that. And I have the booklet here, you can see here. Now, what I was particularly proud of um, in this is we have a message from children. We have, a, I don't expect you to read this, don't worry. We have a message from children here. And, you know, they're saying, great, grown up, dear grown ups, great, we have your attention. We know you're really busy and have lots of very serious things to do, but time is precious. We understand that. However, our time, especially our future and the planet you are leaving us, is also precious. And the end of this really gets me every time. It's it's very, uh, it, gets, it makes my hair stand up. The power may be yours, but the future is ours. Please act. Please involve us. So I was really proud that um, the LEGO group put that together and put that out. And I'm, I'm very grateful to the team that worked with me on that. Um, very serious things very serious things. But back to the ideas. Look at the screen here. We've got um, a slide. <laughs> I still get this wrong. We've got a slide just here. Do, 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 do. And there are loads of kids' ideas on this slide. So we've got everything from fox habitat. This young, this young girl, <laughs> I still can't do this. This young girl here uh, has built a fox habitat. We've got beehives, the young lady in the middle. We've got someone in the middle up at the top has been um, building circular economy, redesigning a space so everything's more circular. And then if your Danish is very good, in the bottom uh, right-hand corner, you can also see some cool stuff. I nearly got it there. Good. Uh, thank you for all the kind comments. Thank you, Shanaz. Um, the usage of plastic, yeah, that is, a, that is a big question, and we are certainly working on it as a company, but single-use plastic especially uh, really needs to be addressed. Maybe you can think about that in your project. I would love to hear. Here's some more ideas. Uh, you, I, I, I really like the Lego Air Cleaner 2000. That's, uh, you know, we should patent that now. We've got another, we've got a bike up here. So I think one of the things I want to mention is when we do this project, when you do this project, you do not need Lego bricks. I can't emphasize that enough. You do not need Lego bricks. You can just draw, you can sculpt, you can mold, you can, you can build, you can paint, you can, I'm running out of things. You can, uh, let's see, you know, sculpture, whatever you like, whatever you like, we wanna see it. And you can see a lot of ideas here are um, different mediums. So we have drawings, we have digital drawings, we have real drawings, we have Minecraft, we have cardboard, we have string, we have paper, blah, 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 loads of stuff. And we encourage you to do the same. So let's have a look. This is really for the educators out there, for all of you lovely people that dedicate your lives to making sure we have amazing um, children growing up to be amazing adults. Now, 
Build the Change has three strands. We have educator, we have events, and we have home. Now, events is what we're looking at here. Um, our workshop with you will be is considered an event, so it's a bit shorter. The educator, you know, after Climate Action Project, we also will be providing you links with to the big courses. They take a long time. They're really deep, but I'm sure you'll, you'll love them. And then we have home, which is um, some of the digital content, which you just saw. Anyway, I think that is enough on the introducing Build the Change. I hope you understand it's a big program, but it's got a very simple goal to gather your ideas and make change happen. That's it. Sounds simple. I wish it was that simple, but we're going to work at it together, I'm sure. So how is the Climate Action Project involved? Woo. Uh, would this be effective with high school students? Absolutely. If you feel that any of the content today you'd like to work with older children, you can. At the moment, the content we create is usually 7 to 12 but we work a lot with 16 year olds, 14 year olds. So it can be adapted. That's the beautiful thing. All right. Uh, how can we train to be an educator for the purpose? I think if we, if Cohen and I talk, I can do another workshop and we can do some training, but it really is very simple. And all of the materials you need to do this workshop are provided. If you go to the educator courses, the big ones that I mentioned, then there's a really big document for you to read and get trained up. All right. Good questions. Thanks for all those. Now, let's see. How do, what can we do? So, we have created a workshop pack. Now, what is a workshop pack? Well, it is a pack for the workshop. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It is a pack for the workshop. And 2022, we have three main things inside that pack. First of all, we have the workshop PDF, everything you need to work through, to go through in your class or as an individual. It takes around 90 to 120 minutes. You, you can play around with that. It's like a Constantina. You can do however many minutes you want. Um, but everything's in there. There's links, there's videos. It's all there. Also, we have workshop teacher notes. So for each of these slides, look, if you look at the slide in the workshop PDFs, there's not much writing on them. So what do you say for the slide? Well, have no fear. We have workshop teacher notes for you. So those can guide you through the session. Lastly, there's an extra, extra PDF just telling you the basics on Build the Change. So some of the stuff I've been through today. All right, so it's a really small pack. We wanna make this really easy for you to get involved in. If you wanna take it further um, after Climate Action Project, and do more build the change, Cohen and I can provide you all the stuff you need. All right. But this is what we want you to do. And I'm getting to the workshop in a second. We want you <laughs> to get my, my thoughts there. I made this very simple and then I, I messed it up. There we go. Step by step, we want you to download the workshop pack when Cohen gives you the link. We'll provide that later. We want you to work your way through the workshop. That's what the arrow is. Oh, there's a link you can see below. Bitly, BTC idea. So that is a link, you'll, you'll get it later. Don't worry if you didn't get it now, but that is the short link for you. Work your way through the workshop and then upload and share your idea via Climate Action Project, all right? So there will be details on how to do that later as well. We'll, we'll recap on that in a second. I'm going to take a breather right now um, and take any questions you might have. Uh, so Cohen, if you want to ask a question on what you've heard about Build the Change specifically so far, pop it in the chat and I will an uh, answer. What is Lego doing for sustainability? Very good question. So for societal impact, we have loads of programs going on around the world. Um, a lot of programs trying to get to vulnerable children who are in need of play, but also connecting more children with sustainability and doing that. On the environmental side, my friends in the, the environmental team, they are working on replacing as many of the, uh, the plastics with sustainable solution. All of the plant elements are already uh, sugarcane based. We are trying some prototypes around recycling uh, pet bottles 
to make new bricks. So you'll hear more about that soon. But equally, we are also trying to keep bricks in circulation. So a lot of people are now sending their bricks to us. They're used bricks, and we are sending them out to children who can't afford to, to buy them and get playful experiences. So those are just a few projects. I can put a link later and you can read more of our stuff, but there's some really exciting things to do. We're also replacing all of our single use plastic in the boxes. You know, when you buy a Lego set, there's a lot of single use plastic in there. We've been trying to replace that for years, but it's finally happening and it will be, you'll see that more and more over the next couple of years. So very exciting. Good question. Um, what do we do if people don't care about this? Wow. I wish I had the answer to that. Um, there are a lot of people who still don't care about the climate. I think it's about making it meaningful for them. So if it's an adult, if it's a child, if you can make it as meaningful as possible, that's when they start connecting. That, that's my only real advice to help build compassion for something that they don't care about is a challenge, but, but we can all, we all must try and do that. There are a lot of communities that still don't connect with the environment and we need to talk to them more and bring them on board with us and make sure they understand the environment is for them as well. Okay, great. I've been playing Lego and every time I think about my childhood, I smile because Lego made my life interesting and full of creativity. Gustavo, Cosme, I love that you love Lego. Thank you so much. I love that. What can we children do to make a change in the world? Well, I think you have some amazing role models these days that I didn't have when I was a child, people like Greta, um, of course. And I think you all need to, to find your voice, find your megaphone, find companies, organizations like the Lego Group, like Climate Action Project that will help you raise your voices. So that is my advice. And just talk and talk with passion, talk with passion, like talk with energy when you talk about the environment and the, and the climate crisis. I think children need to speak up even louder and we're going to help you do that. I hope that helps. Thank, good question, Huda, Shakir. Thank you for that. All right, let's have a look at the workshop. We're going to dive in now. Uh, now, I'm going to zoom through this. This is, where you, this is where you download it. I'm still getting my, there, that's the link. Do, 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 do. I'm so bad at it. It's like looking at the mirror and trying to cut your hair. It's impossible. Um, now, I'm going to zoom through this because it is big. It is big. It's a 90, 90 minute, 120 minute workshop. So I'm going to just show you the basics. I'm not going to show much of the interactivity, but I also want to show you some of the videos. And we need to wrap up before the hour is done. So let's try that. So this is what you will do. A future without waste. That is the name of the project. And you will be looking at um, the circular economy. Let's move forward. That video you can watch uh, another time. It's a lovely animation. I hope you enjoy it. Um, so a future without waste. This is all about circularity. Circular economy is something that we all need to think more about and we all need to redesign and rethink how we make products, how we use products and how we throw away products. We need to rethink all of those things. And this workshop is all about that. Um, we've got some polls in there. So this is really cool because when you answer the poll, it will show the next, it will show you how the rest of the world answered. So you can compare and talk in, in your class about how you might be different to, to other groups. So do have a look at that. We have, do, 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 do. one second. I will just do this. Uh, there's another poll here. And then we've got some awesome words for you. So I, you know, understand. Sometimes I see words, I'm like, ah, what does that mean? What does that mean? And I call up my dad and I call up my mom and say, what does this word mean? And they, they also say, I don't know. And then I have to get a dictionary um, online <laughs> or off the shelf and find out. So we've done that for you. So you don't have to call your mum and dads to ask. We've got all these awesome words here. So you can go through these slides. In the teacher notes, it's got everything you need to say. So when you see slides like this, don't worry, educators and teachers out there, 
we've got everything in the notes so um you don't uh you know not know what something means which would also be bad it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if you don't know what something means it's good to learn eh so we've got some other words here uh economy products natural resource circular many of you will know what these mean already but younger younger folks might not so it's important to cover cover those now it is an absolute pleasure to show you a video now that we've created on the well it's introducing circular economy so Cohen, if we could play the introduction video that would be awesome thanks buddy enjoy it's coming soon in our modern world we take natural resources make them into products and when we're done using them we throw them away and they become waste take make waste it works in a straight line resources go in and waste comes out it's bad for people and it's bad for the planet to prevent this we need to learn from nature nature never works in straight lines it works in cycles everything gets used again and again to make new things by moving from a straight line to a circle, we can end waste and pollution. We can Okay, sorry guys, a technical glitch. We have the correct video. We, uh, uh, poor Cohen, he has so many videos to choose from today. Um, it's sometimes difficult, but that was a video from later. We want to show you the full fact, the full video. Cohen, are we good to go? Is that the future without waste? That one? That's the one. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's the right one. That's my fault. There we go. Let's try again. This is Earth, our home planet. It gives us everything we need and more. But now the planet needs our help. With challenges like climate change threatening wildlife and communities around the world, we need to rethink how we live. Humans have always been very good at making use of the things that planet Earth provides us with. We call these natural resources. For example, we use plants as food, wood to build homes, water to drink, and metals and minerals to make tools and technology. But there is a problem. We take natural resources, make them into products, and when we're done using them, we throw them away as waste. Take, make, waste. A straight line where resources go in and waste comes out. The more things we make, the more resources we use up and the more waste and pollution we produce. What happens to all this waste? Most ends up in landfill, a big hole in the ground for dumping trash in. Some natural resources are renewable, like plants, or the wind and the sun. We can use them again and again, and they won't run out. However, many resources are not renewable, like metals, minerals, oil, and coal. Once we've used them up, they're gone. If we continue this take, make, waste way of doing things, many of our resources will run out. How will we make the things we need? How will we feed people? What kind of planet will we have? To protect our futures, we need to do things differently. Doing things in straight lines isn't working. So what can work? What if we look to nature for inspiration? After all, nature has been thriving on our planet for 3.8 billion years. Nature never works in straight lines. It works in cycles. There's no such thing as waste. Everything gets used again and again to make new things. Let's look at an apple. An apple tree grows and produces apples. When an apple falls, it feeds animals and bugs before it rots, releasing its nutrients and seeds into the soil. Add a little water and sunlight, and a new apple tree will grow. Animals get a good meal, the soil gets a healthy dose of nutrients, and the apple tree gets to make another tree. Again and again. It's win, win, win. Just imagine if we designed everything to work this way. Take a mobile phone. What if, instead of throwing the phone away when a new one comes out, we reused or shared it 
What if we repaired or upgraded it? And when it can no longer be used? What if we recycled it so its materials could be used to make a brand new phone? If designed correctly, the phone and the resources used to make it could be used again and again, just like the apple. Everything in nature works in cycles, so maybe it's time we did too. The first step is to start designing things differently. By moving from a straight line to a circle, we can end waste and pollution, we can keep the things we need in use, and we can regenerate nature. This is good for people and the planet. The best thing is that this change is already happening. It's called the circular economy. It will take a lot of imagination and creativity to make the circular economy a reality. But luckily, people's brains are great at this kind of problem solving. Our ideas can help the planet and everything that lives here. Together, we can build the change. Hey, there we are. <laughs> just, just a bit of background, backstage banter for you. Um, I disappeared from the backstage briefly because of a connection issue. So Cohen was was like, "Where's David gone?" Uh, but I came back, and I'm super happy to be here. So um, that video is part of the workshop. I hope you enjoyed that. As I said, a little sneak peek because it's out there, but not many people have seen it yet, and uh, we have more videos coming. Now, in the workshop, we would then go into time to reflect, give you guys time to discuss um, what has, you've just seen. And we also have a slide breaking it down into three pillars. So circular economy, according to Ellen MacArthur Foundation, can be broken into these, these three. Look, I'm getting the direction right now. Three, da, 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 three pillars. Uh, one is if we eliminate waste and pollution, we can move towards circularity. The second one is keeping resources in, in use for longer, we can move to circularity. And the third is if we regenerate nature and work with pillars one and two, then we can really shift, make a big change towards circularity. Thank you for all the comments. I'm glad you liked the videos. Thank you for those, very kind. Now, after you explain that, we deep dive into each pillar. So you will get a chance to explore. Now, each of these pillars has some case studies to really explain what we mean by, you know, for example, eliminating waste and pollution. So let's have a little watch of another short clip. It will recap a little bit of what you've just seen, but it's only very short. So apologies for that. Uh, hope you enjoy it. It's a very short clip, eliminating waste and pollution. Over to you, Co. In our modern world, we take natural resources, make them into products, and when we're done using them, we throw them away and they become waste. Take, make, waste. It works in a straight line. Resources go in and waste comes out. It's bad for people and it's bad for the planet. To prevent this, we need to learn from nature. Nature never works in straight lines. It works in cycles. Everything gets used again and again to make new things. By moving from a straight line to a circle, we can end waste and pollution, we can keep the things we need in use, and we can regenerate nature. Eliminating waste and pollution is the focus of this story of change. Imagine you have a garden, and every day you dig a little hole in the ground to bury your old stuff in. Now, imagine what it would look like after one year there would be very little green space left for wildlife, harmful chemicals and gases in the ground and in the air, and soil so unhealthy, nothing would grow in it. This is what's happening with the waste on our planet. The only difference is that we're not doing it in our own gardens. But it doesn't have to be like this. We can design things to be circular, which means they stay in use and never become waste. One company called Declique is doing just that. Declique collects organic waste, like orange peel and coffee grounds from one business, loads it onto a bicycle or an electric vehicle, and sells it on to another business that can use it to make something new. 
For example, the orange peels taken from a cafe can be used to make hand soaps and skincare products. Without De Cleek providing this service, the orange peels would simply be thrown into landfill where they would rot. Not only is this bad for nature, but cities have to pay tax for sending this waste to landfill. One business's waste becomes another's resource, which is the kind of give and take that happens in nature too. So how is a business like De Cleek helping us move towards a circular economy? To start with, less waste means less pollution, which means less damage to the environment and people's health. They have also helped create more jobs, as businesses need to hire people to turn the waste into products and then sell them. Circular economy in action. Pretty cool, right? Amazing. And I just want to say thank you for all the kind comments that are coming through. Um, we love you. We love uh, working together with you on this really important stuff. And it's just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more to do. Um, uh, big shout out to our friends in Kiev, uh, Ukraine. Uh, thank you for your messages. We're all thinking of you and anyone else around the world that's facing um, similar hardships at the moment. Um, also, Robina, thank you for your comments. I've seen a lot come through from you. And also, uh, Project Planet in South Korea. Uh, he, what time is it for you? It's very late. Uh, thank you for staying up so late. Um, I love visiting South Korea. It's a lot of fun. I've uh, been there many times. Good. All right. So time to reflect. Another time to reflect. And then we have, every time we show you one of the pillars, we have very short activities after that. So you're creative. You have time. This one is a 10-minute challenge to sketch. We really want you to sketch, um, you know, a school cafeteria that produces no waste of any kind. So that's one example of the little challenges we have in this workshop. Um, I hope you enjoy those. And then there's time to share. And then we move on to the next topic. So keeping resources in use. This is pillar two. Now, we have a video for this as well, but we're not going to show this in the honor of time. But you can watch it in the deck when you download it. So there's a little incentive for you. Uh, but it is fun. We've got another case study in there about keeping products and resources in use. You might recognize the company. No comments. Right. So then you get another little challenge. So this is all about keeping resources in use. And we would want you to create a space where people can bring in old things to turn into new things and to tell a story of one item and their journey and its journey. OK, so that's another little 10 minute exercise you can do as a class, as an individual. Um, if you feel you, you're, you don't have much time, you can skip over this. But we if you do have time, get involved. It's just fun to have um, some hands on, you know, physical, creative time in the flow of things. All right. And then it's time to share your ideas. And then it's the final pillar. So pillar three is regenerating nature. Now, um, I would love to show you this video, but Cohen, I think we're going to skip this one too, just in the honor of time. Um, I will skip this. I do urge you to watch the video for this. It is beautiful and it looks kind of like that. Uh, you can see how beautiful it is. And this one's particularly close to my heart um, because we do need to regenerate nature. We need to rewild more spaces around the world. And we need to work out a way that people who live on land that needs to be rewilded can be involved. I think that's a key thing. And many of you, the countries you live in, do a very good job at making sure sustainable farming. Uh, farmers are educated and understand why they're doing this. And equally, they are you know, paid for what they do so they don't lose out. Loads of stuff to think about. I could go on. I won't. But do download the pack. Watch this video. There's time to reflect. And you probably got the flow now. There's another little build activity. So this one is going to ask you to reimagine something in a town or city so it can help regenerate nature. It might be a bus stop. You might want to change a bus stop into, you know, a bee garden so we get pollinators back into town. You might want to change uh, an underground uh, staircase down to the trains into some sort of moss and fern garden as you go deeper underground and the moisture increases and all that. It, give some thought. Give some thought. There's loads of ideas. Um, and we'd love to hear them. 
Now, we're getting to the big bit. This is why I wanted to rush, because I wanted to give you just a glimpse of what the big challenge is, okay? So all of those small activities you've just seen are just building up your knowledge for this big challenge here. It's called Grimsville. Grimsville has had better days, people. It's had better days, and we need to help it. We really need to help Grimsville. And the challenge for you is going to be to, well, you know what? Let's play the video, Cohen, and they can find out through that. Here we go, Grimsville video. Welcome to Grimsville, one of the dirtiest, most polluted towns in the world. Its streets are littered with trash. The river has more bottles than fish in it. The air is full of fumes. The residents are miserable and bored. Businesses are closing down. And there's almost no nature or wildlife left. Put simply, life in Grimsville is grim. But the town has been given some money from the government to clean up its act and become a world-leading circular town. It's time to show the world how a grim place like Grimsville can be turned into something beautiful. The good people of Grimsville have gotten to work, cleaning up the mess in the town. But that's not enough. The waste and pollution just keep on coming. Your challenge, should you choose to accept it, is to bring your vision for Grimsville to life. Using everything you've learned about the circular economy. Think about the stories of change that you've heard. Can you borrow ideas from them? Can you change and even improve them? Whatever you create, ask yourself these three questions. How can we stop waste and pollution being created? How can we keep everything in use for as long as possible? How can we regenerate nature? And while you're at it, why not think of a new name for Grimsville too? So get that creativity flowing and put your ideas into action. Collaborate. Communicate. Think big and small. We can't wait to see what you come up with. To see what you come up with. I love that last sentence because that is how I feel. I, we can't wait. You know, it's me. It's a guy called Ben and it's a guy called Anders in Denmark. Ben's in London with me. Uh, and we love seeing all your ideas, not just us, but the, the whole of Lego group. So you heard the challenge there, help Grimsville. We all know somewhere a little bit like Grimsville, and we all have probably had ideas on how we can help it. So please, when you, if you want to take the challenge and you want to get involved, we would love to you know, keep in touch and get you certificates if you, if you manage the, the challenge. But please think about the three pillars that I introduced you to very quickly. Um, so when you go through the workshop yourselves, please spend time on those and make sure you understand them. And in the end, how can you bring them all together to help Grimsville and come up with a new name as well? Come up with a new name. You don't have to call it David Town, but if you want to, I won't be offended. I'll let you use my name. I'm just kidding. So. Um, that is the big challenge we want you to do. You've got all of the links. There's the link there. Um, you've got a way to upload your ideas. Um, I believe that's, that's what, what's there. There's another link to that. Um, Cohen, is that the link? The BTC idea is the link to download. Cohen, can you? Yeah, there he is. Yeah. So uh, there's basically two links here. First one, the pack with all of the information you need uh, is this one, okay? I also dropped it in the comments so you can click and then you submit your ID. It will be a picture or several pictures and this is going to be dropped, submitted through this form, basically, okay? Amazing. Thanks, Cohen. Thank you. And I think that, yeah, thanks for clarifying that. I was confusing myself there. But uh, we have... Just to remind you, the final slide here, download the pack, as Cohen just said, work your way through the workshop and upload and share your idea via the link that was just shared. So two links, um, two asks, one idea, 
upload. Can't wait to see. Um, love you all. And I hope you enjoyed that presentation. Um, I hope it got you energized and thinking about how you can make change and maybe redesigning something. Um, so Cohen, back to, back to you in the studio. Uh, how was that for you, Cohen? Did you enjoy that? I absolutely enjoyed that. So you've been joining us for two years now, and there's always the drums, and I think people are really inspired as we could read through the comments. So also a big shout out to all of our attendees today. Um, thank you so much for joining. Uh, it could be night, morning, evening, afternoon. It's brilliant having you. Uh, thank you so much. Also, thank you so much for joining the Climate Action Project. Uh, we have been seeing brilliant things. We have been having people focusing on, on the, the causes, the effects of climate change. There have been virtual interactions during the third week. And what we did last week is coming up with solutions. Also, make sure to use our app, Earth Project, uh, which allows you to keep track of your efforts and which will show you the amount of carbon avoided. And last but not least, from my end, um, please make sure to register for Climate Action Day. We will be having a lot, a lot, a lot of great speakers this year. From the former president of Finland, we will be having David from Lego, Juan from the UN, we will be having uh, Matt and youth ambassadors from WWF. We will be having ministers of education, of environment. We will be having youth activists and so many other people joining our event this year, which will be having uh, a challenge as well. And so it will be a great time. Please register for the event on November 3rd. And the last words will be going to David to wrap up this session. Also, if you missed the session, you can watch the recording, but also there will be another one, and that will be in four you hours. Yeah. Right? Yeah. In four hours. Oh, yeah. It will be back with Jennifer this time, and they will be sharing amazing stuff. David, over to you. Thanks, Cohen. Well, just once again, Thank you all for joining. Uh, thanks for the support you give Cohen and, and the, the, the Take Action Global Project and, and the Climate Action Project. It's incredible what you're all doing together and we're so happy to be involved. Um, do get involved, do share your ideas. We wanna see your ideas, get going on them tomorrow. Maybe not right now, it's quite late for some of you, but get going on them and we'll speak to you all soon. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for the comments and take care wherever you are. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye.